So welcome back guys to another Chicago History Videos episode. If you guys were on my channel, and I don't mean my old channel, I mean this channel, maybe like five, six months ago, you saw me upload a video from the back of the yards neighborhood and I'm using the footage uh, from that same video for, for this video, uh, where I was in an area where there had been a special needs boy who was shot when people were coming through like false flagging and uh, mistaking him for a 2-6 gang member in the back of the yards neighborhood. His name was Jesus, and uh, he he's not verbal, you couldn't speak. So, you know, they came over there false flagging and he got shot right there, and I'd uploaded a video from the spot. And that kind of activity, like innocent people getting shot, in the back of the yards neighborhood is very common. I dropped another video about like uh, the neutrons, you know, neutron for people who don't know, that's basically a non-gang member. And uh, all the neutrons that have been, you know, shot, killed in this area. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the gang conflict in this area. And one of the gangs that a lot of this revolves around. And that is the Almighty Saints. And uh, if you guys saw the previous uh, history video that I did. Well, actually not the previous one. Like a few history videos back. About the, uh, the white gang, the Rebels. And their territory in the back of the yards. And their conflict that they had, they really started it with uh, with the uh, Blackstone Raiders. And for people that were commenting this in the comment section on that video, at that particular time, guys, it was Raiders. It was not Rangers. They changed it to Rangers later. And then El Rukin, Stones, all those names came later. At first, it was Blackstone Raiders at the time that they were into it with the Rebels. Okay, but anyways, to start from the beginning for people who didn't see that video. So in the 1950s, okay, we're going back like 70 plus years ago now. There was a, a gang of white kids, okay, in the back of the yards neighborhood. And it was like mixed ethnicities. Uh, and they called themselves the Rebels, okay? Now the Rebels were in an area that now is majority Latino. Back of the yards neighborhood is like the southwest side of Chicago, okay? So back then there was a lot of white people in that community. And these white guys over there, they gangbang. So the rebels, you know, they were like really what you would consider a super gang, okay? Because they had thousands of members. It wasn't just like a neighborhood clique. Uh, they spanned really like the entire back of the yards community. And matter of fact, I think their membership at its peak was like 2,500. So, I mean, there was like a ton of them. So this was a gang that, you know, spanned like multiple communities. And law enforcement really started to press them. And the exact reason why law enforcement started to press them, I don't know, but it really started, the heat really started to pick up after they had killed a black guy. Uh, it was like a few of their members, one, it was really one in particular that had, he was on some really like bogus stuff that day. He had killed this, uh, this black guy, Alvin Palmer, by hitting him over the head with a ball pin hammer. And that attracted a lot of media attention. Okay, and then... Uh, it was like after that, law enforcement really started to crack down on the rebels. He got sentenced to 50 years for that. If you haven't seen that video, uh, that's back a few weeks on, on the channel. So anyways, the rebels, like I said, were a mix of like these white uh, ethnic groups. So after that, they started to split up, okay, in, in the separate gangs. Now, one of the gangs they split up into was a gang called the Ravens. Okay, now the Polish m members from that gang from the rebels started their own gang and they called it the saints now at that time the name was just saints there was no almighty there was no nothing else in front of it you may have seen the saints referred to especially in news articles or on tv by the name the latin saints that name today in 2023 is incorrect today it's almighty saints uh the almighty was added later at one particular point, which I'm going to talk about in this video, in prison, it was Latin Saints. Okay, but on the street, uh, you know, and really, that wasn't, that was like short-lived. Okay, that wasn't really like a, a long-lasting thing when they were calling themselves the Latin Saints. This is a gang that at one point switched alliances. Okay, they at one point had been with the Folks Nation, and they switched with the People Nation. It real the gang was really like a renegade gang by nature. And this was really one of Chicago's first, like, renegade gangs. Well, I shouldn't say first. 
there was a lot of renegade gangs, but it was like they didn't really fit in with the people or the folks. So they switched at one point and then switched to the people at another point, really in prison. But on the street, a lot of times things were different. So if you hear them referred to as the Latin saints, that name is not correct. Like they don't go by that anymore. Today it's Almighty Saints. And we're going to talk about why they added the Almighty uh, later on in the video. So anyways, the Polish uh, members of, of the rebels split off and started this gang, the Saints. Now they were centered, they used to hang out by this place um, called, it was a candy shop. And um, I'm not positive the exact name of the candy shop, but it, it was like, it was Gus's or something like that. So they, they were hanging out over there, but their headquarters were by a place. And this has always been like a Saints territory. Uh, by 45th and Wood, which today is known as De La Wood. They also, though, have really the entire territory between like 43rd and 47th, and then between Ashland and Damon. So, I mean, A Ashland is 1600 West, Damon is 20, is 2000 West. Okay, so we're talking about four blocks east to west, and then 43rd to 47th. Okay, so we're talking like 16 square blocks as a total, as a total territory in that one particular part of back of the yards and it's known as halo city uh they also i've heard today have other territories in other areas but i'm not familiar with those uh i possibly even out in the suburbs now i don't know but uh and i've heard that there a couple of their members had started something over east for a while i don't know if that's still going over there but anyways that's like their halo city's like their main homeland okay and 45th and wood is really like the main headquarters de la wood so the gang at that point was like all polish like all po it was like an all polish gang now the ideology and like the philosophy and the mission of this gang was kind of interesting so all these gangs they typically have like a like a worldview or a philosophy and some of them have a religion okay now some of them make make up their own religions like lordism and kingism and like you'll hear these different religions which is basically just named after the gang and it's just something that like the leader made up but for the saints it was actually catholic christianity and uh i know that's kind of like contradictory to have like a christian street gang but that's what it was at that time uh and and really i mean today that technically is it uh as far as like their you know their literature and their code and everything and they would do a lot of catholic like rituals like every time that they would go past the church they would make the sign of the cross so they have all these and i'm going to talk about this later on in the video i'm going to talk about how neutrons non-gang members can do their best to stay safe if they have to live in back of the yards um because this is an area where wearing the wrong thing or having the wrong sign can get you killed so the saints their symbols is like it's like a three there's like three dashes like three uh, fingers that they hold up uh, but they also have like um they'll use like a stick figure that with like a halo on it with wings it looks like a like a saint or like a um like a stick figure of an angel or something but another one of their signs and this is actually the gang sign of about four or five different gangs in chicago is the cross it's the christian cross okay i think royals um i think the popes I've even seen the TVLs use it, the Traveling Vice Lords, because it's like a T. And then the Conservative Vice Lords use the Crescent Moon of Islam because it's like a C. That's typically on social media, though. Um, but the Royals, the the Popes, and the Saints, and I think a couple other gangs, too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if the Gay Lords used to do this. But um, the, the Christian cross here in Chicago is a gang sign. Actually, the religious symbol of every religion in Chicago every monotheistic religion is a gang sign the, the jewish star of david is for the folks nation and a lot of folks nation gangs use that the crescent moon of islam is the symbol of a few different uh, gangs in the people nation so you know a lot of people who are not gang members who are just members of this religion you know they want to rock their and represent their religious symbol uh, so I'm going to talk about how to do that safely later on in the video, towards the end of the video. I'm going to give tips for neutrons, okay? But getting on to the rest of the history, though, with the Saints. Okay, so we're talking like late 1950s now. These Polish guys start this technically Catholic gang, and it's just the Saints. It's just called the Saints, okay? Now, they're beefing at this point, ironically, with 
the other gang that split off from the rebels from the rebels and that was the ravens okay now uh, over the years a bunch of other crews would start up in the area and the saints eventually absorbed like most of these crews i wasn't alive at this time and i don't know the names of all these crews i think one was called the polina boys um and i don't quote me on any of this like take all that stuff with a grain of salt like as far as like who they absorbed but i know they they had absorbed like a bunch of these neighborhood crews so their their numbers kept on growing um and they kept on like growing in size and growing in basically military power over there because you know they were basically a protection supposed to be like a protection crew for that neighborhood okay to protect the neighborhood from outsiders that was their mission now obviously as i'm going to get to later a lot of times people from their neighborhood would end up getting killed but uh anyways that was how it started out so they absorbed all these gangs they were beefing with the ravens now eventually a lot of latinos started to move into that area now this was like in the 60s okay and the polish guys from that gang started accepting latino members now this is back then this wasn't like later on there's a prison or anything like that it was just the latinos were moving into the neighborhood and the polish guys just accepted what them right in the latino guys were catholic like the polish guys and it was like an easy transition so their numbers started to swell with latino members uh but a lot of the latinos that were moving into that area and when i say latinos we're talking mostly mexicans now okay the puerto ricans they were like farther north like in humble park they were like up on the north side like in humble park i don't think there were too many puerto ricans moving around there it was like vast majority mexicans so it at one point you know it was like a partially mexican partly polish gang so they're still going by the name of the saints these other latinos though started to form gangs and you know one of the gangs there was a lot of gangs back then that don't exist anymore today i think one was called like the spanish kings um a, a lot of these like you wouldn't even see these guys around today they were like gangs that don't exist anymore so they started beefing with some of these other mexican gangs now, some of them started to move very close, though, to where the Saints were at. So the 2-6 started up, you know, we're talking the Latin folks. They set up over by 47th and Damon, which is like literally right on the border of the Saints territory. So the Saints would just get into it with everybody that was close to their territory. I mean, it was just that simple. The Kings, same thing. The Kings had set up over by 51st, and I don't remember the cross street it might have been ada anybody who's who is from that area can hop in the comments if you want i know it was on 51st it, it might have been by ada um but I, I can't remember the cross street the kings were over there so they got into it with the kings eventually the rasas came to the area they got into it with the rasas these and, and then another one obviously that a lot of you guys uh have already been you know talking about in the comment section is the sds the SDs didn't really come, um, as far as I know, right there by their territory, but they were close by, like, in Gage Park. So they eventually got into it with the SDs. All these different wars, okay, started taking place between the Saints and all these different gangs. Okay, now the 2-6 and the Kings, they don't get along. The SDs and the Kings don't get along. Uh, the party players, I'm not sure about with them and the Kings, but none of these gangs, though, got along with the Saints. Okay, so they did have one ally for a while, and that was the Counts. I've never heard any former Saints members uh, interviewed about, like, why they didn't, and I've never talked to them about, like, why they didn't click up with too many people back then and form alliances with too many people back then, but it really was, like, them, a them against the world situation. And a lot of bloody war started up. So in the 80s, though things started to change because of the folks and people alliance starting up in prison and just one other thing i should mention the saints colors are light blue and black that's the same colors really as the sgds and it's very similar to the mlds maniac land the cyber but both of those gangs are like more on the north side so as far as colors like that wasn't too much of an issue but their ops that's a different story because Okay, the Rasas is like Mexican flags, like red and stuff, but the Kings is black and gold. The SDs is black and yellow. The 2-6 is black and like, like khaki, like beige. All those are very similar, like very similar. The khaki is a little different, but 
the black and yellow and the black and gold, you can easily mistake those for one another. So, you know, knowing who's who and stuff like that, in the 1980s, you know, we're talking like late, late 70s, early 80s now, you had the organization of Chicago gangs changing drastically because Larry Hoover and some of the other top guys when these gangs were organizing alliances of gangs. They were, they were getting numerous gangs to click up and form these families of gangs or these teams of gangs, or as they refer to them as nations. And this is something that when I was growing up was like the paradigm, the dominant paradigm in the streets of Chicago. It was two nations, the people nation and the folks nation. Okay. The vast majority of gangs in Chicago at this time had to pick one of these sides. Okay. And it was, it was basically like all the gangs were turning into two super gangs that were going to war with each other. Now the, there's some, there's some other gangs that weren't under this. I've heard like the black diamond or something like that. I don't know too much about that, but there's a few gangs that were not outside that were outside that, but vast majority either people or folks. The folks nation, their symbol was the Jewish star of David, the six-pointed star, okay? And for people that are saying that it's not that, that's where that symbol started, guys. I mean, the Jews were doing that way before America even existed as a country. So that's the symbol that they used, the, the six-point star. The people nation was using the five-point star. So you might hear that referred to as the fin, and, you know, the, the six-point star, you're just going to... They call it the G star, the six, whatever. Okay, so you see the you would see this symbol like in bathrooms all over Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Like scratched on the doors of bathrooms and stuff. Either the people or the folks like broken or dropped or whatever. So gangs at this time were having to choose because when you went into prison, if you weren't part of one of these two alliances, like that was a big problem. So the Saints, even though their whole nature and their whole like philosophy and origin was as a neighborhood protection gang. They were forced basically to choose one of these. And the first choice that they made was the folks nation. At this time they were into it with the Kings in the folks nation. And they were clicked up at that point with Hispanic folks gangs. And things were a little bit different for a while at this time period. We're talking late 70s, early 80s, between the street and prison. It was like a different situation for the Saints. Uh, so it was during this particular time period that they started going by the name Latin Saints. Even even though the gang had like a, it was like a Polish gang at its origin, the fact that they were clicking up with like the, the folks nation, I don't know, taking that name, it like symbolized that. But on the street, to be honest with you, you know, I was a baby during this time, but I like I've never in my life seen Latin Saints graffiti anywhere. Uh, even when I was a kid, I don't remember ever seeing that. The the media would refer to it as that, like and and the the police you know would refer to it as that, but that was in prison. That eventually though fell apart. They eventually like left the Folks Alliance, and this was I don't know the exact year when this happened, but it was about eight or nine years after that point. There was a Saints member named Green Eyes. He linked up, and this is just a rumor, okay, this is not confirmed, but he had linked up in prison with Lord Gino, the leader of the Latin Kings. And they had gotten along, and so he started basically getting the Saints to flip to the people nation. Now, the Latin Kings was like one of their main ops, you know what I'm saying? That was like one of their biggest rivals. But... You know, these two guys, it shows you how, like, leaders could squash it. So these guys got that to go down in prison. And this one on the street, I'm pretty sure they were getting along with the Kings, too, because until, I think it was in 94, before that point, like, from the point that G Gino and Green Eyes had made a truce to then, I don't think there was any Saints or Kings killed by either side on the street. So the, the truce that they called in prison seemed to hold on the street as well. At least that was my impression. Now this one that I'm about to say right here, guys, this is just, this is not me hearing this from any gang member. This is just me putting two and two together as to why this was. It was around that time that they started going by the name Almighty Saints. So I'm just putting two and two together that it was due to the 
alliance with the kings. That it was them clicking up with the kings, putting the Almighty from Almighty Land Kings Nation in front of their name to show that they were allies at that point with the kings. This was a very short-lived alliance, though, because for some reason, it was in like 94, the kings, you know, the word on the street was that the kings had killed one of the saints. And so the war started back up with the kings. They got into it and it, you know, it was on again. But they kept really the Almighty in front of their name for some reason. I don't know, they didn't drop it like they had dropped the Latin before that. So to this day, you're going to see the name Almighty Saints. And that's due to that brief, like very short alliance that Gino and Green Eyes had in prison. So today in prison, I don't really think the people or folks thing is something that they have to worry about. I haven't heard of that being a problem for them. The last time that I reported on anything happening with the Saints in prison was when I had reported on Babyface, who's, he's a half white, half Mexican SD from um, the Southwest side. He was in, he was the cellmate of a saint. And the SDs and the saints is like one of the most bitter wars uh, down there. So he and this saint, you know, were in the cell together and he beat the saint to death, allegedly, um, with something that was in, in a sock. I think it was like a bar of soap or something like that. So anyways, the saints are into it with pretty much, I don't know too many people that they get along with now. Their main wars, like I said, the 2-6, it's still the same, you know, kind of as it was back in the day. The 2-6, the Rasas, the Kings. The SDs is a big one, and I'm going to talk about a few of those more well-known incidents uh, right now. So one of the most well-known was when one of them had actually shot, allegedly, an ATF agent, okay, with uh, a weapon. He faced up to 20 years in prison if convicted. This was back in 2018. His name was Ernesto. He was a reputed Almighty Saints gang member, and uh, this was from about five years ago. So they said... At that time, a reputed gang member was charged with shooting a federal agent after surveillance cameras captured him in the area where shots were fired early Friday in Chicago's back of the yards neighborhood. Now, this is a prime example of what I was talking about, of people that are not gang members getting mistaken for gang members. This is even going down with police, okay, over there. So an agent with the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, they said, was shot in the face on a Friday as he walked near 44th Street in Hermitage. The wounded agent was part of an undercover task force that was covertly replacing a court-approved tracking device on a suspect's vehicle, according to the eight-page complaint. The U.S. magistrate judge had ordered Ernesto, who's a reputed Almighty Saints gang member, held in custody until detention hearing. He was charged with forcibly assaulting an ATF agent with a deadly weapon and faced up to 20 years in prison. So the area where the agent was shot has been a stronghold, they said, for the Almighty Saints gang for more than 50 years. The Almighty Saints traditionally feud with La Raza Street Gang, whose members are mainly concentrated farther south in the back of the yards. But the Saints also have been in conflict with other gangs farther west in the Brighton Park community and surrounding areas. So the guy was like, he got mistaken for an op is what I heard. You know, the guy was like replacing uh, some, a tracking device on a car. And the, the Saints, you know, saw this guy creeping in the neighborhood and just opened up on him. And, uh, you know... An ATF agent. That was an extremely well publicized incident because it was an example of how the Saints like defend that that territory. On top of the Saints doing that, you also have their ops doing that. Either one of the guys was saying that he was he had the gun on him, you know, because of the conflict that's been going on with the Saints when they caught him. Another guy was trying to get at the Saints. So some of the more well known examples. They said a reputed gang member has been charged for his alleged role in the shooting of two plainclothes Chicago police officers in the back of the yards neighborhood. Uh, he was charged on Saturday, this Rasa a gang member, with two counts of attempted murder and aggravated battery with a firearm. Sources familiar with the investigation said he was the alleged driver of a Chrysler minivan that was involved in the Tuesday night shooting in the 4300 block of South Ashland. The suspected shooter, who was a passenger in the minivan, who investigators believed used a military-style semi-automatic rifle to shoot the two Deering District tactical officers, remains at large. So they caught the driver, but not the shooter. They said it was unclear whether the shooter knew that the unmarked covert van carried officers or if he thought that they were rival gang members. So a source said the suspects are reputed members of La, of La Raza Street Gang, one of four Hispanic gangs believed to be responsible for about three dozen shootings tied to semi-automatic rifles in the back of the yards and nearby Brighton Park neighborhoods since early 2016. So that's one characteristic thing about the gangs in the back of the yards, the Saints included, 
and they even pop up in social media videos with this all the time. They carry big stuff. Anybody creeping on the block, anybody coming through. The one difference between these guys and some of the other gangs, especially in the black neighborhoods, is the black gangs typically are looking for like a specific guy whose face they know. These guys in the back of the yards, man, anybody they don't recognize better watch out. Like they'll just false flag you, say, you know, hey, what's up? And if you just don't respond or something like that, it's going to be a major problem, man. So a lot of people that they don't even know are getting shot. So the two tactical officers, one was wounded in the arm and hip, and the other one was wounded in the back. They were shot shortly after 9 p.m. The officers returned fire, but they apparently didn't hit anyone, and the van was riddled with bullet holes. Both cops were released from the hospital the next day, and one of them was the son of a high-ranking Chicago police official. So police believe there was only one shooter who opened fire from the Chrysler minivan, according to a source familiar with the case. The police have been looking into whether the officers were followed just before the shooting. So the minivan was found by police Tuesday night after the shooting near 37th and Racine in the Bridgeport neighborhood less than two miles away and a rifle was recovered nearby. The investigators reviewed video from the surveillance cameras of two businesses near the shooting scene to try to determine whether the shooting was recorded. The cops were investigating a gang-related shooting that occurred earlier in the evening about 6.30 p.m. near 18th and Halstead in Pilsen, which was about three and a half miles northeast of where the officers were shot. In that earlier shooting, a 15-year-old boy was hit in the leg. Police said that the victim or the people he was with at the time were affiliated with La Raza. So in February, the Tribune reported that gangs in the back of the yards in Brighton Park were increasingly using rifles. Police said that was the only area of the city where rifles styled after AR-15s and AK-47s were regularly used. And uh, they said that that was a menacing new development in gang fights. So at the time, there had been more than 30 shootings believed to have been tied to semi-automatic rifles in the two neighborhoods over the previous nine months. At least 46 people were shot in those attacks, 13 fatally. Police suspected the rifles were being passed around by members of four rival Hispanic gangs in the area, La Raza, the Almighty Saints, the Satan's Disciples, and the Gangster 2-6. Before Tuesday, the last time a Chicago police officer was shot, they said, was November 27th. In the West Garfield Park neighborhood on the west side, that officer suffered a graze wound to the forehead while police exchanged gunfire with another guy and uh, police had fa fatally shot him. And uh, that guy had just shot his pregnant fiance in the abdomen. That was not an issue with the Saints though. This guy that they arrested, this guy Angel the driver, he was arrested in the back of the yards in January on misdemeanor gun and drug charges. So according to a police report in that incident, officers responded to a call of a male shooting at a car and running up to the second floor of a nearby residence. When the officers arrived, they caught up with Angel at his home and found three handguns in his possession, two of them loaded. One of the loaded guns had an extended mag. The police stated that he acknowledged to police that he did not have a, a valid firearm owner's ID card. So when, when Angel was arrested, he told police that he had been carrying the guns for protection, holding them for his friends. So uh, this guy said, told the police that he was carrying the guns for protection against the Saints. And uh, he ended up being the driver on a hit that shot two cops. Now, this was another incident that took place in 2019. This was a guy who uh, allegedly killed an innocent guy that had nothing to do with gangs because he thought the guy was a Saints gang member. So this was a Satan's Disciples member. A 19 year old member of the SDs, the Satan's Disciples had been accused of fatally shooting a man walking his dogs in back of the yards after mistaking his target for a member of this NC. The media here called him the Latin Saints. The name is incorrect. So uh, this guy, Hector, who is in uh, SD, faces a charge of first degree murder in the death of a 25-year-old named Jamil. And Jamil wasn't Hispanic. He was, I think, Arab. He had no gang affiliation, but happened to be walking in the Saints' territory on December 26, 2016. The shooting is believed to be retaliation for an SD's member killed by the Saints earlier that month. So they lost one of their members. They rode for retaliation and ended up getting an innocent neutron, and that is a quite common occurrence. So Hector thought that Jamil was a Saints member. He got out of a stolen Jeep as uh, as Jamil was walking with two dogs over by 44th and Hermitage. He then fired 16 shots with an assault style rifle, according to prosecutors at the hearing. And uh, he was struck three times, the victim including in his chest. One dog was also killed. He shot his dog too. After the shooting, captured by video surveillance, Hector got back in the Jeep and fled. The SUV was found burning an hour later over by 51st and Hoyne. Then this following one was really tragic, and this was one that 
I reported on my channel at the time, not this channel, but another channel, the, the previous channel that I had. And it just goes to show how everybody was getting at the Saints, okay? Everybody was riding on the Saints, and this one, and hitting the innocent people. And this was one where the 14-year-old girl was killed. So they said the shooting of a 14-year-old girl in the back of the yards is believed to be linked to an ongoing conflict between a long-entrenched gang that and one that is relatively new to the area. So the girl was with her boyfriend over by, in the 1700 block of West 48th when members of the party players, well, they, they said... The media got it wrong. They said party people. Uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was actually party people or party players. Take what the media says about this. The media is using a lot of incorrect stuff when, when covering this. So take everything they say with a grain of salt. They were calling them the Latin saints and stuff. Uh, but party people, it may have been party players. So anyways, because um, I don't think the party people are nearby there actually. They walked up Wednesday evening and asked what gang she belonged to. Now, this is a 14-year-old girl and they're asking her gang affiliation, bro. This is the type of stuff that goes on over there. She's a seventh grader, okay, and they were asking her her gang affiliation. She said that she was not in a gang, but a relative belonged to the Almighty Saints, and that was a bad idea to say that. Oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. Sister, don't do that. Don't do that. Anybody, any of you kids, oh, man, no. Bad move. She mentioned that a relative belonged to the Saints, and one of the gang members fired twice, hitting her in the head. You don't have to be personally in a gang. Bro. If somebody's asking your gang affiliation, you're a neutron. Well, don't say the word neutron because like gang members typically only use that word. Just say, I don't, I don't have nothing to do with none of that. You know, that's all you can say. And then just hope they believe you. So, yeah. But anyways, um, they were saying that it was gang related. The politicians were saying it was gang related. A classmate of the girl said the uh, party, they said party people again, I think it's party players, have been moving into the area recently. I don't know if that's true or not, because I think the party players have been there for a while. We have members in high school and uh, middle school in the Southwest Side neighborhood. The classmate said that she had seen them on the block where the girl was shot. She was with friends with everyone and tried to be, if she could, they said, even people who were affiliated with the old and new gang. And they said, I think it's related to that. So. Anyways, the politicians were saying the Saints have decades-long woods on the back of the yards and are believed to be responsible for much of the violence. So that guy Ernesto, uh, to wrap that story up, in the shooting of the Fed agent, got a 200-month federal prison sentence, uh, which he, I believe, is still serving. Yeah, so as you can see, back of the yards is very dangerous for innocent people. Now, I had mentioned that the Saints had turned from, you know, predominantly Polish gang into a predominantly Mexican gang. One of the early members, one of the guys from the days when it was a Polish gang, was a guy named uh, Joseph Krenkowski. And uh, I had talked about him in my video on white gang members. There's not too much public information on this guy. He's actually in the gang book. His, his mugshot is in there. And the difference between him and the other members, the other members all look like they're in their 20s, 30s. And he looks like he's in his 70s. So he is like one of the old school guys. I'm going to put up some old school pictures of him here. And uh, he hung around in, as the gang turned more Latino and kept doing it. A lot of the guys, you know, the old school guys from the early days had left or something like that, you know, left the gang. But he was one of the guys who stayed there in the neighborhood and kept right along with it. I, I've never heard of the Saints really having like a hierarchy of leadership, but, you know, some of the guys may have some pull with the other guys. I don't know. But, you know, he was uh, one of the guys who stayed through all these transitions. I mean, from the days when they were just the Saints to the Latin saints, to the almighty saints. And he just recently passed a few years ago from, um, I heard it was health pop problems. He did not get killed. Uh, none, of the, none of the ops had killed him. His street name was Butcher. Anyways, guys, getting on to what I was mentioning earlier in the video, tips for innocent people to stay safe in this neighborhood where so many innocent people get killed. Okay, one is the obvious thing that, you know, I had mentioned about the girl, never say anything. And what answer to give these gang members is a little difficult. Um, there was an incident where some SDs, a guy who was saying that he was a neutron, when some SDs came up to him, was killed like right in the, in the middle of a lot of people. The whole thing was caught on camera. And he's saying, I'm a neutron. You're going to bang on a neutron? And, you know, the other guys were saying, I'm an SD. Like I mentioned with the girl, saying that one is a neutron is not really the best idea because that's like gang lingo. 
So I would, I, what I do, okay, when these guys, or what I used to do when I was younger and these guys used to press me on that type of stuff. Like I said, the last time I got pressed on something like that was probably like 2001. You just say the part of the city where you're from. Like just say I'm from the north side, the south side. Don't mention nothing about gangs. Don't say the word neutron. Uh, if they say where you're from, don't say I don't gang bang because, you know, that, that that indicates that you, you know, familiar with that subculture and that you know the question that they're asking. You want to just act clueless. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the north side. Like I'm from, it was that other incident where the guy who, he was a straight, paisa straight from Mexico had gotten killed. He was rocking like black and I think he was rocking like a, like a gold or tan t-shirt or something like that. Some SDs came up to him, false flag and talking about what's up my king, how, everything good king. And uh, they killed him right there. It was also on camera. Um, I don't know what type of answer he gave them, but okay, the colors thing is, is the big one. You don't want to wear light blue and black, gold and black, yellow and black, red and black, none of that. Uh, and you don't want to wear pink and black, that's IGs. Uh, you basically, the safest thing is black and white. Now, that is also a gang. It's actually a few gangs. But I've never really heard of anybody getting mistaken for a gang member because they're wearing black and white. You know what I'm saying? That, um, even though it's gang colors, mm, like there's so many innocent people that are just wearing like black pants and white tees and stuff that, like it's too generic of a of a color scheme for people to like mistake you as a gang member. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't worry about that. You got to wear something. I mean, you're not going to walk around like uh, wearing a bed sheet or something. So you you got to wear something. So I would I would rock black and white. Okay. Or the safer thing to do is like I said in the vi the video on my old channel that I dropped on the SDs, just dress like a lamb. Like. You, you see like, okay, in, in my neighborhood, you see like preppy white boys, business guys walking around all the time wearing stuff that probably is gang colors, but it's not those type of clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to dress like a nerd. If you dress like a nerd, I mean, if you're rocking like a gold polo shirt and like black pants, then if you're still rocking black and gold, I don't rock black and gold, period, or light blue or any of the, like the main gangs, like the big ones. Don't rock nothing like that. But if you're wearing like, you know, a nerdy outfit, the odds are greatly reduced that it's going to be a problem. Okay. Now getting on to the, the gang signs, because as I mentioned, okay, the sign of every religion, every monotheistic religion in Chicago pretty much is a gang sign, including the Christian cross for like four or five different gangs. If you want to rep your religion and rock a, a cross, which obviously a lot of people do, I highly advise not to get a tattoo okay the gang a lot of saints gang members get cross tattoos a lot of royals get cross tattoos okay now the royals do it with like the two dashes above the cross um but even without that okay if you if you want if you get like a cross tattoo on your face like you've greatly increased the chances you could get mistaken for being a saint or a royal or something. Uh, don't get no tattoos of the cross. I know a lot of Christian guys, a lot of Catholic guys. To be honest with you, that might even be against the rules of. Uh, I don't. I'm not familiar with the rules on tattoos for Catholics. So if you're just a Catholic person that wants to get a cross tattoo, I think that's actually against the rules of the Catholic Church. But um, some people do it anyways. But uh, you know, if you want to, I. Don't recommend doing that because you would get mistaken for a gang member, especially if you get the tattoo on your arm or on your face where it's visible. I would just rock one like on a chain. Uh, same same thing with clothing. Like if you rock a cross on your on your T-shirt or something like that, you could probably that would probably be safe. Um, you know, depending on, on on how it's depicted, you would have to be a little careful on how it's depicted. A lot of people they they rock that they like the style. The clothing you should be all good as long as it's not like those colors i'll show you guys i had gotten a few t-shirts from this uh like mexican store about 10 years ago as long as it's not those colors like i'll show you one here this one might be eh, it's blue but uh i don't know i mainly just get compliments on these t-shirts but these other two should be okay uh these you know no one's like mistaking this for gang stuff in ever in my life like wearing this stuff uh the blue one is the only one that might 
like be a problem. You just got to watch out on the colors. But this type of thing, usually you can you can rock with no problem. The, the safest way to rock it is on a chain. You know, you get you a gold cross. Nobody's mistaken that for being a gang, gang sign. Like, because too many neutrons do that. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, if you get, like, a Jesus piece, like the head of Christ on the chain or whatever, like, that's, like, a common thing in hip-hop. Nobody's mistaken that for a gang stuff. So that's really the safest way to rep, you know, your beliefs if you want to do it like that. Uh, for the crescent moon of Islam, in that neighborhood, I don't know too many gangs are, like, repping that symbol. That's more of an issue, like, out west or in the area with the stones. But same thing, I would not get a tattoo of it, and I'm not familiar with the rules on, on tattoos in Islam either. I don't think any Muslims can hop in the comment section if tattoos are permitted, but I think that's against their rules too. So again, the chain is always going to be the safest thing, but I'm not sure you know, if that would be something that people would identify. Uh, but tattoos, definitely I would not do. Um, and then for the Jewish Star of David, now this is the one you really got to watch out for. If you're repping the six, if you've got the six-point star, okay, if you've got a tattoo of that, 100% folks gang member. It's like an SD or a GD or something. Like, if, unless you're wearing, like, a full Jewish outfit, you know what I'm saying? Like, with the, the way the Jews dress, like, unless you're, like, 100% Jew, identifiable as a Jew, like, you're really pushing it. There was a guy at um, at one of the school high schools that I used to sub at. He was an old old school black guy, and he was one of these guys, I, I don't know his exact beliefs, but I believe that, you know, the Jews are, I mean, that black Americans are the real Jews or the real Hebrews. And some of these guys, you know, they rock the six point star of David, like to rep their beliefs. Okay. That they're, you know, the, the Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelites. I know, I know some guys, I'm actually friends with some guys that are, that hold this belief. If you're black and you're rocking a six point star, like even on a chain, mm, like you could be seen as a GD, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the majority of guys in Chicago that are repping that are repping it for GD. They're not repping it because they think they're a Jew, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely would, I don't know, that that one's a little iffy. But yeah, the six point star, mm, like you, you got to be a Jew to rep that. That's my personal view because that's 100%. Is that even more than the cross or the, or the crescent moon of Islam? So no tattoos is the big one okay and uh definitely if you have tattoos no face tattoos so rest in peace to all the innocent people that have been killed in back of the yards that's my little history my little brief history on the almighty saints anybody that's a saint can hop in the uh, comment section but neutrons watch out over there man because it's a very dangerous thanks for watching guys your boy chicago news i'm out